Hey, hey YouTube. This is me, me again. Thought I'd come by. Quick video. First of all, happy Father's Day. I'm trying to get this blue glare in my eye. Happy Father's Day to the fathers and even to the mothers. Because it's women who have become mother and father. I played that role in my son's life. I mean, after they were teenagers and their father left, we were divorced. I played that role. It's not an easy role. It's not, especially when you're raising young black men. Man, many, many, many sleepless nights. I, ooh. Because my sons, I mean, we come straight up out the hood and they uh, had a lot of their classmates were killed and sold drugs. Went to jail. It was pretty rough. So, but they made it. Thank God for giving me the strength to hold on, regardless of what I was going through. Man, I, my life wasn't. I wasn't a perfect soul either going through there. But I, I did the best I could, and and called on the higher power of God, the God that I knew to help me in that situation. And protection came in my kids made it do that. Uh, so, but congratulations to all other mothers and fathers. Well, really fathers, because it's not Mother's Day, but you you know who I'm talking about. Um, I was thinking about something real quick. Um, been on my mind a couple of days. And it's about being innocent. And when do you get a pass for not knowing any better? People say, if you know better, you do better. But supposing you don't know any better, are you held accountable when you don't know any better? Or, I guess it just depends on what age you are in, because... Back when I was coming up, ignorance was just everybody was so-called ignorant. We didn't know anything. My mother, my father, they didn't know anything. Their parents didn't know anything. So they just passed the baton to us. And I didn't know anything. But the only thing they knew was Jesus, stay in the church, and be a good little girl. And they made sure... Because my mother watched us. I mean, and she had to because my daddy was, if we had came up pregnant, she would have got the blame for it. So, I remember one time, I couldn't have been no more in the, in the seventh grade. And I came home from, it was in the evening, kind of late in the evening. That was night, nighttime. And I ate something, me and my sister ate something. And I vomited. Oh, I was so sick. And my daddy was there. And he first thing he said, Mabel, you done let some of them 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 boys up that goddamn church touch this gal and you I'm we got to find out what's wrong with her. And my mind, why I'm saying he why he fussing at her and I'm sick. That gal and got pregnant and and my mama this is one time my mother put her foot down. She said, Chad, you get somewhere and sit down. Because ain't nobody around here pregnant. Don't even go that way. And he was still huffing and puffing. And next thing you know, next five minutes, my, my older sister come running down the hall, vomiting too. And he got, oh, oh, I, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. But that kind of mindset, just because you vomiting and you a girl, you pregnant. And at nighttime, don't you, don't you know it's morning sickness? You know, when you're pregnant, it's called morning sickness in most cases. But I've said that just talk about how ignorant people can be and pass it on from generation to generation. I started my cycle when I was nine years old, going on 10. I'd been 10 the next month. But my mother didn't tell me nothing about that. She just gave me the M encyclopedia. Me and my sister say, read this. She pointed to it. Menstruation. I read it. Gave books to my sister. She read it. 
but I thought menstruation was what a minister. I thought I was talking about a preacher. I kept looking. I said, well, where is the church and what? But I didn't ask any questions either. But you didn't know what to ask. I guess if I had said, Mama, where the preacher at? Maybe she would have explained it more. But we were taught back then that children should not talk. And we did not talk. We said, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, or no, sir. That was it. So I didn't ask her about where the preacher was when I was reading that, that thing in the encyclopedia about administration. Left it alone. I started my cycle probably a couple of months uh, later because I think she, she kind of figured that that was getting ready to happen to me because my breasts were already there. Here I am, nine years old. And she probably figured I better try to tell her something because this is, she going to be an early bloomer. And my sister was still flat chested. And, and I'm the youngest. <laughs> so we, and, and the girls at school that had full bosoms like that, we would always put our books up here and walk around like that so nobody would see how big our breasts were. But, when I did start my cycle, I thought I had hurt myself because my stomach had been hurt and had a bad headache. And I said, well, what? My head hurt, but how come I'm bleeding? And I went and told my mother. I said, Mama, I'm bleeding and I'm hurting. And she says, oh, it's that time. It's that time. Let me get you a pad. I thought she was getting a Band-Aid <laughs> or some medicine or a Mercura comb or something. She come back with this pad. Here, put this on. Put this in your underwear. She didn't give me one of them belts. She didn't even give me a belt. Just put this in your underwear. I put it in there. I'm wrong because you know, I had a blue line. I put it with the blue line up instead of down. Where it at? A couple of hours or three hours later. Mama, I'm still bleeding. Let me give you another pad. I'm saying, ooh, another Band-Aid? That's ignorance. That's real ignorance. And that's ignorance not knowing what questions to ask. And my mother didn't know how to deal with it because that's the way they did her because they wore rags back then, so she didn't get any more information, so she couldn't give any information. You can't give nothing you don't have. If you don't have it, you can't give it out, so. But I went on through that, and I didn't learn about the cycle until my friends at um, elementary school, the girls that had a uh, breast, uh, Mary Sam, have you started your, your bleeding yet? I said, yeah, I'll be bleeding. Up. What What made me do that? And, and they explained it to me. And I said, I'm going to do that for a long time. And I was just ooh, upset that I'm always do that. But they still didn't explain me to, <laughs> to me that, you know, that's the part of a reproduction thing. But one girl, she came, uh, she was my best friend. She said, very soon. But you know, boys have a period too. I say they do. She said, "Yeah, yeah, they they have a period too." I say they bleed. Well, yeah, it's 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 blood, but it ain't blood. It's white, white blood. She said, "Yeah," and and it hurt it hurt them if they don't shake it out of them. So they got to shake the blood out of them. She said, "Yeah." How do they, what do they call dicks? She said, yeah, they got to shake the blood, the white blood out of their dick. Now, that's ignorant, isn't it? I'm ignorant, and she ignorant, and the ignorant teaching the ignorant. So, I mean, oh, my God. It's, it's, y'all just don't know the dark, and can you see how the dark ages lasted so long? And can you see how man had to come up with the age of information? We were going to die if we didn't find out stuff. Just in darkness. Because I, I, was, I was in darkness.
for a long time. And here I am in what the nine years old, ten, third, uh, third, fourth grade. I had to figure out all this stuff by myself. And then you, you, you know, go on up to 19, yeah, 19, 18, 18. I'm sitting in church, in a holiness church, uh, one of, a used to be Church of God in Christ. Y'all know how I feel about church folk. Let's preach. Uh, sitting there just talking around his mouth. Just, it's 11.30 going on 12 o'clock. He's still talking. And he sits there and says, you women, you got to be careful because a man will eat you up. He will eat you up. He'll eat all of your inside, all your woman parts. He'll eat them up. I'm sitting there, just as not you. You know how dumb I was. I'm like, Ooh, a man will eat you up. And this is my pastor saying that. He, he is the next thing to God, so he got to be telling the truth. He eat you up. Eat your woman parts up. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, surely he would bite your fingers or your toes first. Oh. And then I said, well, they're going to kill you first. Yeah. And I said, but he didn't say nothing about killing you first. And I said, oh, that's horrible. But do you see how that traumatized me? <laughs> My dumb ass traumatized me for, I would say, six months. I am 19, 18. And then I, I kind of started hanging around with my ex-husband. And we got to know each other. And we decided we going to do sex. And it, it took a while. And then we decided to do it. And then... He finally was able to do the do. And when it was over, he says, Oh, hurry up, hurry up, get up, get up. And I'm saying, Oh, I'm hurting so bad, but I went on, got up. He said, Go to the bathroom because you'll get pregnant. You'll get pregnant. I said, I will. How am I going to get pregnant? I didn't know nothing about that. I get up and go to the bathroom and all this water on my leg. And I said, This man done peed on me. Why he nasty? Why would he pee on me? But still didn't ask no questions. Didn't ask him what this was. Or and you see how dumb, how ignorant. It's a wonder I made it. And I didn't learn the sexual thing until, because hey, he may not know, knew nothing either, Chucks, until... After we ended up separating, and you know, you get around a, a different group of people, and another man, and people on your job, they really school and tell you. And a lot of times, when you don't know nothing, see, we come up in an area where you didn't say nothing, so <laughs> we people be talking, and women be talking about stuff. So I didn't say nothing because I didn't want nobody to know how dumb I was. But I, I got this listening ear. I'm, I'm learning. When people leave, I had a girlfriend. I said, "Well, is that really true?" She said, "Mary, Sam, uh, Mary, you don't know, do you?" I said, "Oh, I don't. You don't tell me these things." They school me, and they just, you know, had patience with me. But my point is, when you don't know, just don't feel, I don't know, bad because you don't know. You know, it just happens when you don't know. But now, it's not too many things that we don't know because of the Internet. It's, it's connecting everybody together. And the ignorance we or ignorance won't get by. You can't, uh, you can't make it now saying, I don't know. Uh-uh, no. But I think the ignorance ended with my era, God, because these these kids know they're not dumb like I was. But 
I learned when I'm supposed to learn, but it's a wonder I didn't get taken real quick and could have been on, just anything could have happened, happened to me because I didn't know any better. But now I know, and, and, I, and your parents or adults or whoever, you can't say what they too, well, there's a, a limit to what kids should know, but you have to decide yourself and, and let your child know. And then you got to let them know that they can ask you anything. Tell them, don't ask nobody. Whatever you want to know, ask me. Be it this, if you want to know anything about sex, homosexuality, gay, being a lesbian, everything. You have to just spread the cards out and name the topics. You can't just say anything about sex. You got to just say if all different versions of sex. Because if, if you don't name it, they'll say, well, she ain't going to tell me about that. But don't don't have no kids that, that are afraid to ask questions. Because, like I say, if you don't know what questions to ask, it's not too many things these kids don't know now. So, But anyway, that's my, my take on being ignorant. I was going to read a chapter about it. That's why, I, oh God, that's why I thought about it. This book, y'all know I always holler about a book. This book, um, Four Agreements, John Miguel Ruiz. I was reading this, and that's what made me remember about ignorance. Ooh, hold on a minute. I got to find it. Let me, I'm going to put this on pause. Hold on a minute. Okay, okay. I'm sorry for not even, I got to run my mouth and got off the chain. But this is the thought, this is where it came from. I have, I was reading this book last week, uh, this part of the book. It says, this chain of training from human to human comes from generation to generation. It's perfectly normal in human society. And this picks up, uh, uh, he's talking about uh, victim, being a victim. Uh, what happened is that we have the book of law. The big judge and the victim who rules our lives. We are no longer free because the judge, the victim, and the belief system don't allow us to be who we really are. Once our minds have been programmed with all that garbage, we are no longer happy. This chain of training from human to human, from generation to generation, is perfectly normal in human society. You don't need to blame your parents for teaching you to be like them. What else could they teach you but what they know? They did the best they could. And if they abused you, it was due to their own domestication, their own fears, their own beliefs. They had no control over the programming they received, so they couldn't have behaved differently. That's what I was talking about. There's no need to blame your parents or anyone who abused you in your life, including yourself. But it is time to stop the abuse. It is time to free yourself of the tyranny of the judge by changing the foundation of your own agreements. It is time to be free from the role of the victim. This goes on and on, but this, this I love, I love, I love all of his books. So that's that's why I had this on my mind, but I intended to tell you about it early when I'm coming up on 18 minutes. But if you get a chance, get uh, uh, Don McGill Ruiz's books. And um, I'm coming, I'm, I'm going to make an audio book of Nobody's Here But Us, Looking for God in All the Wrong Places. The audio version will be out we're hoping the end of August. So anyway, I'll, I'll keep you posted. Happy Father's Day. Bye-bye.